I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my diary of a painter. This is my studio, which I'll show you. It's kind of in disarray <laughs> at the moment because I think I may have just finished up that big project. I've been working on my very big painting called I'm Like Icarus, but I know how to swim, which right now is over here. Let me flip it. Here it is. All lit from natural light by this side window. Nice to see it in a new perspective. So at the start of this week, I oiled out the whole painting. Oiling out means putting a super thin and as thin as you can make it layer of oil on the painting. So all the colors that have become matte and sunken in will look vibrant and fresh again. So you can like really see the painting, how it really looks. So I oil out with a brush and oil, obviously oil. <laughs> I like to use Oilio Gel by Rublovs. And then I will take a sponge, uh, a makeup sponge, and wipe all over the painting so there's no excess oil left behind, but just the bare minimum that I need. And the painting was over here on this side of the studio. So it was on that back wall. And so this light right here, homemade light box that I made, I've been using this that lights the painting and then on the chair i have this light that i bought off amazon that lights me the models um and i had a mirror set up in front of this light box so i can be you know looking at myself in the mirror while painting <laughs> and everything in my studio super casual i have things on stacked up on chairs a lot of the time and most things are on wheels so i can be changing up my studio space really easily. And then back here, so once I oiled it out, I'd sit in this chair in the back of my studio. So I would have a very far away perspective where I could be viewing the painting right there. And so I'd sit in the chair having the oil painting totally oiled out so I can see everything really clearly. I would be able to just make a lot of mental notes. Sometimes I write it down to what I want to do that week and all of the little changes that I want to make to the painting. So I like make myself a game plan for that week for how I'm going to finish it up. And at the end of the video, I'll show some footage with um, stuff that I was doing to finish up the painting. But this whole painting process has been quite weird to finish and make this painting, something that I'm completely not used to. Because before with painting, I always had everything set up, like a still life, so I knew exactly what everything was gonna look like. But this, I used myself as the model, but everything else, I did a lot of out of my head, a lot of imagination and just making stuff up, which I've not done before, kind of stitched together an image with different elements like that. So for the process from the beginning, I first had the concept of the image that I wanted to make. And I go in my sketchbook and I make a lot of, it's a little dark, hopefully you can see. It's the really light sketching though on the pages, but kind of just scribbles <laughs> is how I like to sketch these things out. And the first iteration of it, I had the figure on floating on her back in the water, kind of like that famous Ophelia painting. I think it's by John Everett Millais, I believe. And then I switched it to a more upright position, more how you see in the finished painting. There's some other ones where I'm messing around with the placement of the wings in the figure. There's another. And then 
just kind of sketching out some ideas for how the wings are going to rest and sink into the water. So that's how I started sketching in my sketchbook. And then I did a value sketch with charcoal and white chalk on gray paper. So this is pretty close to the final one, except for I flipped the image. So she's on the, the left side in the actual painting. I think I started out with this one and I was figuring out value wise if I wanted that back wing to be really bright or not, but ended up with this one, as you can see. Third step, I made a more detailed and larger value drawing. That's a lot more, it's really similar to what I have here. So that was helpful making it bigger, <laughs> not just like in my little sketchbook since the painting's gonna be bigger so I could work out more problems that way. And then the last thing I did was made a study of my facial expression that I wanted, which is this guy right here, which I like this a lot just in and of itself, even though it's a study for the painting. I think this is really, really beautiful. And I had it taped up in different places, taped up by the mirror that I was looking at for myself to get the, um, that would help me every day remember like the, the head position that I wanted. And then when I was farther along in the painting, I just taped it up right beside the painting so I could continuously reference it during the painting process. And at the time, I thought all of the preliminary, preliminary sketches and drawings was enough to do this painting. And it was because I it's finished behind me, maybe finished. Um, but working on this painting, I, it felt like such an inefficient way to make a big painting like this. And it's the first time you're doing it. So it's like a huge learning curve with it. So next time I do a big figure painting like this, which I have an idea for that's going to be multi -role, multi -role, um figure painting. I'm going to make so many more sketches and not just drawing sketches, but also painting sketches as well, because I had no idea what I was going to do with the water or the wing color wise and that sort of thing. So it was a lot of figuring it out while I was working on the painting, which is fine and fun and kind of go with the flow that way. But I feel like I could have made this painting a lot quicker and just been more efficient with it if I had some more things planned out from the start. But from filming this, I actually finished painting it yesterday. And so I had the painting over there. And once I had stepped back and I couldn't see anything else that I would want to change or correct and it felt finished, I wheeled the painting over here because I've got nice natural light. This is almost a north facing window. So not nice natural light that comes in this side. So I could one, see the painting under a different light source since before it's been under artificial light and also having it in a different spot in my studio helps me see it in a new way because I've been staring at this painting. I've been working on it on and off for months. And so I've been staring at it for so long and I really want fresh eyes looking at it. So putting it over here with a different light situation, it kind of freshens it up for me so I can see it and see if I want to make any changes to it. And I don't, I really, like how it looks and I don't see anything that I want to like fiddle or change. So my plan is to flip it around, put it against the wall so I can't see it for a few weeks. And then when I'm ready to look at it again, I'm going to flip it around so I can see it. And so then I will actually have fresh eyes looking at it. And so then if I, don't see anything that I want to change or mess with and it feels finished to me, then it will be officially done. And now here's some footage from me working on it this week, finishing it up. Okay, so this is one of the sessions of me working on it. I wanted to bring some light and glow to the water and get the colors to swirl more. The water was something that I didn't originally plan out color-wise, 
more and more, I kept adding more colors and started to like this rainbow kind of galaxy effect that it has now. But it took a while of trying out a bunch of things before I got something that I really liked. And that's both color and value. Once I found the colors that I liked, I found myself brightening up a glow right under the figure more and more. And then I wanted that light to swirl and kind of move to the right a little bit. So the composition has this slight circling effect to it. And all that, the same goes for the wing that's in the background and the wing that's in the foreground and deciding how much I wanted it to stand out or fade away into the painting. And with that back wing, it was a lot of keeping it dark in the shadows, but then brightening parts of it out and then highlighting slightly the right side of the wing, but still subtly enough that it doesn't take away any attention from the figure. It's a lot of back and forth of warming stuff up and cooling stuff down, changing colors and then changing values. But I do like how all that looks in the finished painting because then there is this really interesting surface when you get close to it because you can see evidence of all those layers then. But then when you step back away from the painting, all those layers make a nice thick atmosphere in the painting, which I love. Oh, and it feels good. I'm unofficially calling it done for now. <laughs> I already celebrated with a burrito. And so now I'm going to take the weekend off <laughs> and move on to the next things.